YouTube has started rolling out changes that allow your vertical live streams to show up in the shorts feed and other mobile kind of promoted areas on YouTube on your phone so that you can get more viewers. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to stream to both horizontal and vertical streams to maximize your potential exposure. This process does involve making two different stream events on YouTube. There is no current mechanism for doing both at the same time on the same stream, kind of like how TikTok does, does it. However, the multi-track RTMP update that I've been covering with the Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting Beta would allow YouTube to do something like this should they choose to implement it, and I'm gonna keep pushing that they do, because that would be the far better workaround. In the meantime, the first step is to make two different streams. Now, you can either do this with the start stream streaming option or I tend to make my streams with stream events. So I made a couple different thumbnails that differentiate which stream is which, just kind of as a gimmick. And then I made two stream elements, or two stream events. One of them I named the PC horizontal version and the other the mobile vertical version. And I differentiated that in the thumbnail as well. And I went ahead just so it's easier for me to keep track. In my stream settings for those streams, I made two new stream keys. One of them is a standard 4K60 just stream key that I just labeled horizontal. And then the other one I've labeled vertical and I did 1440p-ish because you want a lower, but you don't need to send the full fat 4K for a vertical stream and set that one up. And then I chose the you know horizontal and vertical stream keys in the respective streams. That way I just, it was easier for me to know which one was going where. Then you'll need to set things up in OBS. For this, we'll be using one instance of OBS. So I will be using my primary stream output in Canvas within OBS Studio to go to the primary horizontal YouTube outlet. So 4K Canvas, all that standard stuff, my scene collection is already built, but to get the vertical stream going, I'm going to use the Atom Vertical plugin. This is a plugin by the team of Atom who makes, you know, that's Mr. Greggle's team that makes OBS bot, stream bot kind of thing. That's what Atom itself is. And then they released a free vertical plugin for OBS for making clips for your reels or TikToks or shorts or whatever, but it can also be used for streaming. So I have it set up to just say 1080 by 1920 vertical canvas. And then I used the source cloning and scene cloning features to kind of rebuild and restructure my scenes so that I could have the same scene in both horizontal and vertical. So I made certain things bigger because the issue with with mobile is even if you did turn your phone and watch something horizontally, a lot of tiny chat and other UI elements and whatever would be kind of difficult to read. The legibility would not be there. So I made things bigger. I cut out elements. I made it so just a couple ideas are there for you to get the vibe. And then I linked my scenes. This is a really cool feature of the vertical plugin is that you can right click your scenes in the vertical scenes tab, go to docs and you have a whole set of vertical, you know, scenes, sources, canvas, whatever. If you right click your scenes, you can select scenes that they are linked to. So whenever you switch to a specific scene for your normal canvas, it switches to that scene for vertical. So for example, for my just chatting scene where it's a punched in, you know, crap view of my face and the just chatting text or whatever, I have it set so that any of my just chatting related scenes are switched to, it automatically does the vertical one for me. So I don't have to set up new macros or remember a bunch of different hotkeys or whatever. And I'm not necessarily limited in terms of scenes like you might otherwise be with say a virtual camera output where you can only really output that one cropped view for TikTok Live or something like that. And so I set up my just chatting scene, I set up a desktop scene, and this one was pretty lazy. I just have, you know, the, the desktop above my head and me punched in, and then I had my starting soon, be right back, and stream over scenes. And for the starting soon and be right back and stuff, I just tiled the, the existing scene three times to fill the screen, which I think makes for a pretty cool effect. Obviously you could redo your graphics a bit or whatever, but again, right-clicking those scenes and choosing the linked scenes from my normal scene list that automatically switches the vertical scene. So it's all handled automatically and you basically just have that extra layer that it's outputting that you do not have to stress about or worry about at all. Now you also have to manage transitions for the vertical canvas and there is a separate doc for the vertical transitions, but if you add a new one, you can import your existing transitions from your horizontal canvas. Just keep in mind with Stinger transitions, they're still gonna import with the widescreen video and it's not gonna work quite, quite right. So I would, I would stick to more like built-in stuff like luma mats or swipes and slides and cuts and whatever and just do transition overrides on different scenes to make it happen because a lot of the Stingers aren't gonna work right in my experience. And I hope there's an update to vertical at some point to make that work a little bit better. Now we did pick up as I was working on the stream some tips for how we might better enable certain things. Like for example, the desktop view, just putting the desktop up top is not super legible. It's great if you're just showing a general idea, but most people aren't gonna be able to say, show us, 
but most people aren't going to be able to see a whole lot. But if you use the Lewis script for follow your mouse cursor, which I've shown in tutorial videos forever ago, and I know Andy Lippy has shown a couple times and stuff, it's great for tutorials where you can have it automatically zoom in your desktop on your mouse cursor and follow it around. You can create a dedicated desktop display capture source for that. Add the Lewis script, and then you can go in and customize the settings and have it follow your cursor around. And that's the display capture you add to the vertical canvas. That way, on the vertical, on the horizontal canvas, you get the full view, you get to show whatever you want. You can use the punch in if you want, but on the vertical canvas, it really punches in and just shows exactly what your cursor is doing, which makes it a lot more readable on mobile. And it's pretty cool. There was also some other ideas thrown around in chat with regards to, say, if you had a multi-host live stream, you could automatically have Probably with StreamerBot, but definitely with the Move audio filter from the Move plugin from OBS, also from Exceldro, uh, you can have it detect whichever audio source is currently active and just cut to a cropped version of that camera shot, even if they're on the same camera view for vertical. So if you had four people side by side, you could have it automatically crop vertical views of each of the four people based on who's talking, which would save you a lot of time. And then someone was asking like about a multicam train scene, and for that you'd kind of need macros, but you, you, there's lots of stuff you could enable there to make the vertical scene a lot more dynamic and not just feel like you're lazily just like punching in on or just zooming out of your horizontal scene for the mobile viewers. And that is going to play a lot into making sure that your mobile viewers stick around. To set up the stream on the vertical canvas, which by the way, the vertical canvas does use more resources. It is going to be a whole separate canvas that OBS has to composite and render, which does add GPU resources. So keep that in mind. And obviously it is a second encode. So there will be more encoding headroom. Modern GPUs these days are not gonna have an issue and your dual PC setup is definitely not gonna have an issue if you're doing that or if you're streaming from console or whatever. Like a lot of people are gonna be just fine. But then you go into the Atom settings with the settings cog and you have to manually select the YouTube stream server. When I made my horizontal stream, it was the default stream. But when I made the vertical stream, the control view in OBS, it showed me that the RTMP server for it was live too. So I had to select that one from the list, paste in my stream key, name it, hit OK. And then I choose my settings. So for my stream, I did 4K60 horizontal, which I did in HEVC, uh, which is H265 higher efficiency, YouTube supports it now. You can do AV1 as well. Uh, I just wanted something easy. I did 35 megabits per second for the 4K60 horizontal. And then for the 1080p60 vertical, I did about 15 megabits per second. You can play around with that, do whatever you want. Um, but the that is the bit rate I use. So then in the ATEM settings, I unchecked use OBS config because my horizontal streaming settings aren't gonna make sense for my vertical ones and put in the settings there. And then you hit start streaming from vertical, you hit start streaming on OBS, and then you click go live once everything looks good in the YouTube control panel, and things were live. And theoretically, this is going to improve two things. First is going to be discoverability, because you have, you're have you gonna have more opportunities to be discovered than just your subscribers and who finds you on your standard YouTube feed, which your normal stream will take care of, but then you're also gonna show up in the shorts feed and the shorts live feed. And if people are watching a short of yours, it's gonna show live around your little profile picture. It adds that extra layer of discoverability. And I would imagine if YouTube is trying to keep going toe to toe with TikTok, they are going to kind of invest more in making those streams discoverable. I tried going through on a couple of my accounts that are subscribed to main, like swiping through the shorts feed real quick and seeing if I could find any streams. I've never seen a stream show up that way. But some of the some of you all in chat sent me screenshots and showed the different ways it can show up. And I saw some different ways where like it can show at the top of the subscriptions feed, it can show on your channel page, it can show at the top of the shorts feed, and it can show around your profile picture. For some people, when they clicked on the profile picture, it still took, the, took you to the horizontal feed. So if you're doing both, I recommend having links posted, pinned to chat or in the cards or something. Like keep, you know, in implementing links so that people can get between them a little bit easier. And I hope YouTube adds in some sort of switcher. So it's like, hey, you're watching the desktop view, but, but also go watch the mobile one because you're on mobile. Like that would be pretty cool. But it gives you that discoverability factor. Um, which is a big deal because everything's all about this. So you get you get to do that and not just have a second stream like on TikTok or something that is just telling people, go watch me over here for the real thing. Like you can have a much more integrated real thing, but also retention, keeping viewers around and keeping them committed to subscribing to you or watching more of your content because you are making a catered mobile stream that requires, like it requires some setup work from you in advance, but in terms of actually streaming, you don't have to manage that second stream pretty much at all. Like all, if you set up the scene linking and all that, like I talked about, 
you don't need to manually switch any scenes or do anything for that mobile stream. So it's just like free extra keeping viewers around and appealing to them, which is awesome. The only thing you really have to worry about is with your chats. The way I had to do it was just pop out both of my YouTube chats from both streams because they are separate streams and put them side by side on my prompter and just kind of look at them that way. But apparently the streamer bot chat bot, which I have not had any time to mess with, will actually integrate the two. So that is really nice to see. And it's definitely something I would recommend looking into if you want to combine chats because juggling two whole separate chat windows is kind of annoying. But like I said, hopefully they look into the multi-track RTMP update and will implement a way that you can do both of those streams kind of in one and have a unified chat. I think that would be a huge boon and a huge step up over a lot of the other platforms. Like I said, TikTok already has that now, but I don't think they are using the RTMP update because their feature kind of predates it, but it also requires TikTok Live Studio to do it. And TikTok Live Studio is a resource hog of an app that I cannot stand using and I really don't want on my computer. I wish they'd just give us stream keys. And so this is gonna be my workaround for now. I'm thinking I'm adding vertical into my, my multi-streaming kind of list here. And you can still use the multi-stream plugin to send to Twitch or whatever as well. Or if you have the bandwidth for it, you could do the vertical stream with vertical and then you'll just send your horizontal stream to a relay, like a restream or aircast or whatever to send out to the other places and do it that way. So there's lots of possibilities here. This is just a, you know, I've covered taught you all the all the means of setting up OBS over the years to get to this point. But this is just kind of how you would set it up based on having experience with OBS. If you need more guidance on how to use OBS and how to set up all of these individual things, I do have a course linked in the description, glitch.mov slash OBS. It is the definitive guide to OBS as everything you need to know. And we're still running that relaunch sale because you all just love it so much. And I have taxes to pay soon and I'm freaking out about that. So glitch.mov slash OBS. It should automatically apply the coupon, but the coupon is relaunch linked in the description. Save you a bit. Otherwise, come chat with us in the forums about this at demodisc.zone and remember to be kind. Rewind. If you're confused about what the RTMP update and what this means and that, why Twitch is changing, I've got a video on that as well. It's linked below. You should go watch it right now.